I heard somewhere that if Hawaii would exist in Europe, it would be the Flores Island. Well, at the time of releasing this video, I have never been to Hawaii and I cannot compare them. But what I really know for sure is that this island is extraordinary. The local vibes of the island are not destroyed by tourism industry and your experience here can be just unique as ours. In this episode, we will show you how you can get here, the challenges we face on non-tourist orientated island and, of course, our adventures during our hike and exploration the island. The journey to Flores Island was a not a simple one, but it was definitely worth it. We were flying with a really innovative plane. So to Flores, we got from San Miguel Island, where we had a bunch of adventures. If you haven't seen that episode, I highly recommend you check it out. To San Miguel, we had a flight by budget airlines Ryanair from Porto. To get to Porto, we flew from Vilnius. I also have a separate video. But let's talk about these flights and this unique experience they offer. The main airline on the Azores is Azores Airlines SATA and they can take you almost to all these islands in archipelago. We found fascinating is that the planes used by the locals are more more like a regional buses because being inside, you experience a bus-like atmosphere rather than a typical airline's vibes. The airport are also similar to our regional bus stations. It's quite an exceptional yeah, yeah, yeah. experience. Yeah. How fully functioning this island and air alliance it's like a public transport here you can see students from one city in one island flying to another one the same with elder people we flew from Ponte Delgado to Flores on one of those tiny birds with stopover in Horta where you can access the highest mountain in Portugal Mount Pico and then we took a flight to Santa Cruz the capital and biggest city in Flores Island it, we made it we came finally to Flores Island. Lovely. So the biggest city in Flores, and do you know how many inhabitants it has? Well, yeah, only 2,000 people and all island of Flores. If your answer is 3,400, you're definitely right. It feels like I just visited some village next to my hometown. The only difference is that I traveled to it by plane. And nowadays there is no other option because the hurricane several years ago destroyed the harbor. It didn't take too long to understand that there is not so much to see in Santa Cruz. So we begin to look for options on how to start traveling around the island. In fact, there is a limited number of rental cars available due to the small size of the island. This leads us to find alternative option for transportation. We discover local buses. The bus driver offered to be our guide for the day, taking us to farthest village on the island. Because he had to drive there anyway because, you know, he is a bus driver. Our bus driver took us on a journey to the other side of the island, making stops along the way. As we drove up into hills, the weather changed rapidly from sunny to foggy and to rainy and back to sunny again. The ocean influence on the weather here is amazing and made right feel like we were in a scene from Jurassic Park. Our bus driver are really amazing. He shouldn't do this, but he stops in hot spots and showing us. That's how nice people are in Florida. But surprises didn't end here. The end of our journey, he gave us the phone number of a person who could help us explore the island over the next few days. After our adventure, we went to one of the two restaurants on the island for some delicious fish. We strolled around the town before heading back to our hotel to prepare for next day's adventures.
since we didn't have too many traveling options, I called the number the bus driver gave us last evening. And yeah, dude just came into the hotel. And then we find out that this local taxi driver. What was a bit of surprise. Oh, no, 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 do you have a car? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a car? No, no, I have to go to Payal. Ah. Oh. The Gulf Bridge pays every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, percentage of the tax in here in Azur you have the, the, the tax yeah we, how many persons from from the salary well I think 14% 14 14 yeah in Lisbon it's 21 percent your source is 40 percent 14 the salary is too low in here so the uh, normal salary in here is 700 euros a month it's like not, average it's nothing uh. and for example if not to buy, but let's say to rent a place, how much? It, it uh, well, 250 for a house. Oh, okay. As we settled into the taxi, we engaged in conversation with a driver, who shares interesting insights about the island and its people. He pointed out notable landmark along the way, including the place where we're heading to. A taxi let us go somewhere in the forest. Well, this kind of situation did not happen for the first time. Not a big problem. We came here by taxi because it was most suitable option because no public transport are moving here in Flores Island on weekends. And uh, they have on island only 200 cars for a rent and all of them are rented now in the middle of June. Taxi was like suitable option because it cost only 20 euros from Santa Cruz to middle of the island and now we hiking on this interesting path. I took my phone, turned on the Kamut app and then we just hiked the path which was shown by app. Walking towards to the island's largest waterfall, Poco Ribeira de Foreiro, we are struck by a stunning natural beauty surrounding us. After land my drone, I made brief photo session for Lina with the waterfall, and then we took some time to fully enjoy the beauty of this pleasant place. Before I move on, I add Faya Grande to our navigation, a town I will show you later. For now, let's enjoy our way to it. living in the village As we continue our journey we couldn't help but notice how Flores Island feels like a small country each town, including a capital Santa Cruz, resembles a bustling city to us a mainland inhabitants. It's reminiscent of our childhood days when we played games and created our own miniature nations, complete with mayors and presidents. For, for the person who came from a big city, I mean, like from the city, and your destiny is to uh, visit some city, you're thinking like about city, but you're getting a town and it's happening mind-blowing experience in your head. Well, we went to the store. Uh, what's the name of the city? Fraja Grande. Fraja Grande. And it was lovely because uh, people are here really chill, calm. And one lady tell us the story about how she grew up in the United States and uh, at the age 21 she came here and started her life and uh, now she's 60 something and she's enjoying her chill life here in Azur Island. Hola. 
The island remains relatively untouched by tourism industry and other commercial influences. While we occasionally encountered fellow travelers, the majority of our all-day hike were spent in the company of friendly locals, few people in town and some on our path. It's a moment like this that allow for a truly peaceful connection with oneself and nature. During our hike we found ourselves surrounded by the serene beauty of the island, with only few souls sharing the trail. It was an opportunity to disconnect from noise and social media, work and everyday routine and fully immerse ourselves in the tranquility of nature. As we continue our hike the sun was shining and I thought it was the perfect time to soak up some rays to destroy pimples on my full of fat stomach. Little did I know that the island weather had a different plan. Or should I say clouds appear as soon as I took mo out my t-shirt. It's really nice that here in Flores Island uh, when you're hiking up in the mountains there is this kind of stops. It's like box. But it's probably because it's raining a lot of here. Like now it's a lot of clouds. So if it's raining you can stop here and uh, wait until the rain gonna finish. Flores Island, situated in the middle of vast Atlantic Ocean, is not a stranger to this ever-present guest. Clouds frequently visit the island, creating a unique and unpredictable climate. A moment you are basking in the summer sun and the next you are surrounded by clouds and rainfall. The fog catched us really fast. I believe it's not fog, it's a cloud from the ocean. And uh, now we're going down to the town which has name. What name? Lag Lagos. And, uh, and we get we get quite really fast. Hiking in a cloud, all the liquids from the air they are they're sticky, not only to the clouds but to hairs as well, and it's really. Cool. After a long day of walking through rain and fog, we have finally reached our destination, largest des Flores. It feels incredibly satisfying to have accomplished this mission, despite the challenging conditions. And the best part? Our personal driver is here to dash us away to our hotel, offering a well-deserved rest. So folks, that concludes our unforgettable journey through Flores Island. If you are planning a visit to Azores, I highly recommend you adding Flores to your list. It's an opportunity to witness the daily routine of small island nation, surrounded by untouched nature and perfect ambience of self-reflection and relaxation. If Flores is not on your plan, check my previous video about San Miguel Island, packed with useful tips and tricks to make the most of your adventure travel while keeping the island's beauty intact. Don't forget to hit subscribe button if you enjoy what I do. I'd love to hear your experience in the Azores or just about this video, so please share them in comments below. And if you like this video, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up. Thank you for joining us on this journey and we'll see you next video. Cheers, have a good one!